St. Mary's is a small station on the T1 Western Line, around about 50 kilometers west of Central. Currently, the station is undergoing a complete transformation as part of the Western Sydney Airport Metro, which will link St. Mary's with the new airport at Badgerys Creek. This will turn the station into an interchange station, but not for the first time in its history. Follow me as we explore the crazy history behind the Ropes Creek Railway Line, a military line almost no civilians got to ride on, a line that lay forgotten for years, a line which has only one known video recording proving it ever even existed. Today, we'll be exploring what is perhaps Sydney's most curious lost railway. I'm Sharath, and welcome to Building Beautifully. Before I continue, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already, and do be sure to check out the rest of my channel, your go-to YouTube destination for rural things city planning, after the video. Oh, and you should follow me on my new Insta and my new Twitter accounts. I've been posting a lot there, it's a lot of fun, I reckon just come and, you know, check it out. In 1941, during World War II, a munitions factory was built in the far north of St. Mary's by the Commonwealth Government. In order to service this munitions factory, the construction of a railway to the factory was commissioned. In 1942, a railway known as the Ropes Creek Railway opened, named after a creek known as Ropes Creek that it crossed over. The following footage of the line was recorded by Trestleg One. Massive credit to him, given that this is the only footage available of the line. I'll get to why that is in a bit. Please do watch his full video via the link in the top right. The line started at St Mary's, branching off from the main line just west of the station and heading north. It then made a very sharp easterly turn, remember that for later, before arriving at a station, Dunhevard Railway Station which serviced the Dunhevard Industrial Estate. Dunhevard Station was located in a cutting and consisted of a single island platform, reached from the Industrial Estate via a long steel footbridge. The station had a weatherboard station building, classic for the time, as well as a signal box. After Dunhevard, it then turned northerly again, running parallel to Forrester Road. There was a level crossing here at Lynx Road. The railway then crossed its namesake, Ropes Creek, over a rather rickety looking timber bridge. The line then continued northerly through wide stretches of undeveloped countryside, which was needed to separate the residential areas of St. Mary's from the dangerous explosives being made at the St. Mary's munitions factory in Ropes Creek. Finally, it arrived at its end at Ropes Creek Railway Station, which serviced the munitions factory. The station here was also an island platform, with a weatherboard station building and station box. All in all, the line was 5.6 kilometers long. Passenger services on the new line started practically immediately, for munitions factory employees only. Interestingly, the line was fully duplicated in July 1942, only a month after it opened to Ropes Creek. Meanwhile, most of the Carlingford line remained single track until its closure in 2019. The line had a very complex anatomy, just like most industrial lines of the era. For starters, it had many lines branching off of it in the vicinity of Dunhevard, known as sidings linking the line with various warehouses throughout the Dunhevard industrial area. Dunhevard itself had many sidings, a total of four sidings, leaving the Dunhevard station with a total of six parallel tracks at its peak. Six. The sidings that served the explosive factories of Dunhevard were ultimately removed in 1949. On the 2nd of September 1957, the line's third and final new station was officially opened, Cochrane Railway Station. Unlike the other stations, the station was built in a side platform format and had a brick station building. 
The station was only about 500 meters south of the Robes Creek station, which really makes you question why it was added. Apparently it was due to increasing passenger numbers in the area. The station was named after the former general manager of government explosive factories, J.R. Cochrane. The line was electrified in 1957, which gave the line significant capacity potential. There's something truly fascinating about the Robes Creek line, something almost intangible. The line never had that much patronage. Initially in 1957, it had 10 services a day, but by 1983, it only had five a day. Yeah, five. And yet the line was very well equipped. Too well equipped, one might even say. But the curiosities didn't stop there. You have to remember the munitions factory at Ropes Creek was built by the Commonwealth government. Not to mention the fact that the train provided access to an area involved in the production of, well, explosives. So understandably, security was very strict. Civilians weren't even allowed on the line. Cameras were strictly not allowed at any stations, which makes this footage some of the most valuable footage in existence. No other known video footage of the Ropes Creek line in operation is known to exist. It feels like lost media watching this video of the line, gazing at views of a line closed to civilians, a line that very few ever got to see. The line was so underused that it had one very special use, to test out new trains. The sharp bends of the line just before and after Dunhevard, coupled with its low patronage, made it the perfect candidate for testing. The demise of the Ropes Creek line was surely inevitable. Let's consider the facts. The Ropes Creek line had a grand total of three stations all located in residentially scarce industrial estates. A recipe for demise, frankly. In the year 1985, the line only earned $5,000, but its costs of maintenance were $250,000. Far from ideal. The line closed on the 22nd of March 1986, to no protests. And then, nothing. The line was not removed. The stations and its buildings simply remained in place. It was almost as though the government forgot the line was even there. For 15 years, the line sat completely intact. Its tracks weren't even removed until the turn of the millennium. Images of the disused line from this era are strangely haunting, and yet gripping. To see a line sitting completely unused, yet ready to be used again any day, feels so surreal. So paradoxical. Now for the fun part. Signs of the old Ropes Creek line can still be found even today in 2022. Starting at St. Mary's, the line actually remains extant all the way from St. Mary's to Christie Street in the backyard of Sims Meadow. You can still see it through this fence on Christie Street. This part of the line is actually now part of the St. Mary's Intermodal Transport Hub, which has been operating since late 2021. Next stop, Dunhevard. Going to Dunhevard is perhaps the most exciting of all, because the station is still there. Well, kinda. Here I'm filming the video from the former footbridge, although the stairs down to the platform no longer exist unfortunately. But you can still see the platform, buried underneath lots of grass which I think is just crazy. Dunhevard has been used for a lot over the years, to store trains and even pipes back in 2005. That big rectangle that you can see is the former station building's floor. The building is long gone now, demolished back in the 80s. I think it's just amazing that even though the station closed almost 40 years ago, its platform remains there, reclaimed by nature. The line's former cutting remains a permanent divider within the Dunhevard Industrial Estate, which is only crossable via the footbridge I was just on. The line then turned sharply north to follow Forrester Road. And you can quite clearly see where the line once ran here, in amongst the trees. I actually found a little station hut remaining in place even today in 2022, which you can see here in the old video. What a find. 
Continuing north, the line crossed over Lynx Road here. And then we arrive here. Huh? What's this? Grapes Crossing? What happened to the old munitions factories? Let's rewind the clock a bit. In 1991, perhaps the biggest development to the Ropes Creek area arrived when the government announced plans to turn the Commonwealth land around the munitions factory into a new housing estate. Plans were, as I always say, bold. Housing for 40,000 new residents was planned, complete with a new light rail system over the route of the Ropes Creek line. The plans eventually did go ahead, beginning in the mid-2000s. The suburb, named Ropes Crossing, was slowly opened in the early 2010s, albeit without that light rail system. The suburb currently boasts a modest population of around 7,000 residents. A far cry from the initially planned 40,000, but the suburb is still a nice, peaceful area to live. It's hard to believe this area was once home to a munitions factory, an area involved in creating explosives, an area once completely barred to civilians. Okay, back to the line. We can see a unique art installation at the entrance to the Ropes Creek Estate, which utilises old rails from the old Ropes Creek line in a very creative way. Brilliant. There's now a footpath over the former line's alignment. We then arrive here, at the former Cochrane Station. Once located here, on the corner of Ropes Creek Boulevard and Rafter Parade, there are sadly no signs that remain of Cochrane Station, as it has been completely consumed by housing. Can you believe that, just opposite a station that once served explosives factories, there is now a residential shopping centre? The short distance from Cochrane to Ropes Creek has been somewhat covered in houses, but a lot of it does actually remain empty today. And then, we arrive at Ropes Creek, which once looked like this, and now looks like this. Ropes Creek is by far the biggest success story of any closed railway station in Sydney. For the Ropes Creek station remains completely extant, restored and maintained, and it now sits as a cute little park in the centre of Ropes Crossing. Simply beautiful. Now that we've explored the entire line, you're probably wondering about one simple thing. Why didn't they keep the line open, or at least preserve the corridor, for when they started building houses here? Well, this may be controversial, but I think I'm going to have to side with the government on this one. You see, Dunhevet is still purely an industrial estate, so a passenger station wouldn't be extremely viable. Although I do know that seemingly useless stations in industrial estates like Leightonfield do exist. Cochrane and Robes Creek, both within the new suburb of Robes Crossing, would have at least served a residential population, but as appealing as it may seem to have left the line open for residents, Robes Crossing currently only has a rather small population of 7,000 people. That's barely enough to justify the costs of a train line, especially such a short one. But on the other hand, had they left the line open, more efficient high-density station development may have been possible around Dunhevet, Cochrane and Ropes Creek. Maybe had the line survived till housing development in 2008, it could have been extended north, perhaps to Riverston via the route on the screen. Personally though, I do think the Ropes Creek line's demise was inevitable. Without any extension, such a short spur line like Ropes Creek was unfortunately bound to close. As it would be, the metro at St Mary's that I mentioned earlier isn't planned to end there forever. There's plans to link the Sydney Metro Northwest at Talawong with the metro at St Mary's. I would personally propose stations at Schofields, West Schofields, Marsden Park, Mellon Bar, Shane's Park, Ropes Crossing, North St Mary's and St Mary's. When this metro project is built, Rail will once again run through the Ropes Creek area, for the first time in decades. 
do note this project is probably still a long way away though. So there you have it, the Ropes Creek Line, perhaps Sydney's most fascinating lost railway. It had some of the strictest civilian access of any train line. It had historically low patronage and services. It lay forgotten for years after its closure, and now people live on land around the former line, once dedicated to explosives manufacturing. It truly is fascinating uncovering this railway, which will forever remain lost to time. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.